And as the glasses get hipper, the people wearing them get a bit hipper. <laughs> so what does it cost? Um, not as much as you think. Um, if you have $500 million, call me. Um, you can spend as much as you want. But traditionally, above uh, a regular budget, I'd say 10 to 25%. It's a bit of a range. Depends which snack bracket you're in. If you're doing a feature and you have a lot of money, it's not going to be that big of a bump up. If you're in the sub half a million dollar range, it could be a few hundred thousand dollars. It might be double your budget. Uh, the impact, though, of do doing a 3D film is huge. And as the cinemas expand and as television comes online in a few months uh, around the world, there's huge demand for 3D content. Doing a CG project, if it's already created, doing the 3D version of an animation is not that hard, about 10% more. You've already created the box, you just need to create the second eye. And 2D to 3D conversion is expensive. The two telespots you saw were converted from 2D to 3D. So you can see it is successful, it does work. There's a huge rush right now to get Hollywood films uh, re-released in 3D and conversion is the solution. It's about $9 million to convert a Hollywood film. You know, that's their economy, they, that, that works for them. It's not really applicable in Canada. TV. TV is here. It's actually uh, months ago I was saying it was years away and now it's months away. So Samsung has already sold 3 million 3D ready DLP TVs in the last few years. Uh, in the lounge, which we now have uh, uh, over in the Quebec room, you can actually see 3D televisions with your own eyes. You can play 3D games. You can see 3D educational material and you can see 3D on an iPhone with no glasses on the iPhone. So Panasonic just did a huge uh, exhibit at the uh, Vancouver Olympics, and they also did some shooting at the uh, opening uh, ceremonies. These are monitors that do not require glasses, which is a whole other stream of the 3D world, but you're gonna see that in airports, digital signage. And this is the holy grail of 3D TV, which is no glasses required. A um, lot of announcements day after day, the history of 3D is being rewritten by the broadcasters. BS11 is a satellite network in Japan. They've been broadcasting 3D for about three years. Sky in the UK is gonna do the World Cup, as is ESPN in the US. You're gonna see that. If you're an early adopter, you're gonna buy a 3D TV and show it in your house. You're gonna see it in bars initially and uh, in cinema. Discovery IMAX also made an announcement, as well as the BBC uh, has talked about doing the Olympics 2012 in uh, 2012, London in 3D. Where there's TV, there's advertising. Don't need to say much about that, but the advertisers love it. Uh, gaming is all in. There's about 300 games already available in 3D. Gamers love the glasses. They love gaming. They love sitting close to the monitor. It's, it's the holy grail for gamers. It's an it's a easy, um, easy sell. Mobile, that little, little guy there is a, is a 3D webcam. It's the 3D iPhone, it's just an aftermarket case that goes on your iPhone. And uh, there are 3D laptops coming out. Acer has an $800 3D laptop which uses polarized glasses that's currently on the market. What the critics say, we hear it all, we hear I hate 3D. We hear, uh, isn't it just a gimmick? We hear, do I still have to wear those funny glasses? And why would I want to watch my dinner with Andre in 3D? I hear it all. Um, when they say I hate 3D, I don't think they're talking about what you just saw. I don't think anyone's ever seen an IMAX film in 3D and says I hate 3D. They're talking about anaglyph. They're talking about bad horror films, old school. New digital 3D, people pretty much love it, as long as you have two eyes. The glasses I talked about, eventually the glasses will go away. Um, my dinner with Andre, you know, that film was about intimacy and uh, 3D, as you saw in that U2 clip, has the power to be extremely intimate. It's just like being there. And it's not really a gimmick any more than any other storytelling tools, um, you know, are used. It's, it's like cinematography, it's like editing, it's just a new language for creating uh, a story. This is what's coming up. All kinds of things, including uh, the re-release of Titanic in 3D, Converted, Beauty and the Beast, and a lot of live sports, a lot of concerts, and uh, a, lot of, um, a lot of gaming. So I'll just wrap up by saying I've been doing a lot of traveling and speaking primarily outside of Canada, but we have a very important role in Canada to play in this revolution, and it truly is a revolution. 
There's my company and some great companies in Toronto that have invested a lot of money. Uh, the National Film Board has done 3D. Um, IMAX is obviously on board and they want to get from the screen down to the TV. Uh, a few of them, Creative Post, DJ Woods, 3D Camera Company have got cameras. The labs, Technicolor Deluxe, are also very invested in 3D. Um, I'd like to uh, uh, make an announcement today. Uh, the 3D Film Innovation Consortium uh, has a project called 3D Flick, has recently been funded um, by the, um, the OMDC and is going to create a start a development project that's both for education and development of 3D tools and to help make Ontario a center for uh, 3D with the Ontario Center of Excellence. So thank you for the, uh, the, the guys who brought the technology. Uh, appreciate it. Expand or AMZ. And uh, I hope you believe. Thank you.